So we all know this iconic screenshot where everybody was hyped at first about the RTX 5070 versus the 4090. And then all that changed when Nvidia actually showed some of the benchmarks from their internal testing. And it's saying it's using that multi-frame generation X4, 4X mode. It's just, it isn't really real performance. It's not fake performance either. Like these frames could be valuable and stuff. But the real question was the two games that didn't use the multi-frame generation. These were the two that are a reference point of how these are actually going to perform. But even these had their own caveats where one has ray tracing. The other one also has ray tracing plus DLSS, at least upscaling in the game. Ray tracing performance is good, but why are they only showing us ray tracing performance? Are they trying to hide the rasterized performance in the game that doesn't use ray tracing? That's what got me a little bit curious and I think it got a lot of you guys curious as well because some people did also break down these benchmarks and gave a percentage of this. Now this is from a guy on Reddit. You can see here, I'll leave everything linked in the description. Basically what they did is they counted the pixels and actually figured out the percentage difference on these. Based on the ray tracing ones, they seem pretty good. Like on those two games, it's like 33, 35% faster, something on the 5080 and the 4080. But what's weird though, and this whole situation has completely changed because Nvidia, if you check their website that introduces their RTX 50 series graphics cards, if you scroll down to see the performance numbers now, Nvidia has officially changed the numbers that they are revealing to us. This graph looks a lot different than this one. There's a lot more numbers on it, and this has just been retroactively changed on their website. It wasn't like this before. Why did they change this? And what are they trying to show us? They changed for all the graphics cards. So there's the 5090, 5080. Again, the chart's a lot bigger here. Here's the 5070 Ti. And then here is the 5070. And really a lot of this is showing more of the multi-frame generation kind of shit. I mean, however, though, the observant among you might have noticed that these two games on the left now are different. Now it's Resident Evil 4 and Horizon Forbidden West. Resident Evil 4 is using ray tracing, but Horizon Forbidden West is not using ray tracing. So this can actually give us an idea of how these perform in games. Honestly, based on the predictions I made in the other video, based on the specs, yeah, it does seem like they're trying to hide this from us. Why they showed us now, I, I don't really know why they change it, I have no clue exactly. I've compiled another, guess what, guess what, I'll zoom out too, another spreadsheet with tons of data. I'm gonna hide stuff on here so it doesn't sound like confusing. We will be checking out percentage comparisons with the performance in these games against all these other different cards to see how this is actually going to stack up. And it should be pretty accurate because based on the specs, these are lining up pretty much how I thought they would. Now, where am I getting this? Well, if you go over to computerbase.com, DE, which this is a German website, I'm pretty sure. So this is translated from German. So this, there might be some mistranslation, but overall it does seem to be pretty good. Basically what they did is they counted the pixels a lot like this guy here, they counted the pixels to see the percentage comparisons. And then what they did is compile this into their own chart. And this is where I'm pulling this data from. So go check out this link in the description if you do want to see that a little bit further in depth. Now comparing the 4090 to the 5090, this is probably gonna be the card with the greatest uplift, 33% more CUDA cores. It has 33% more ray tracing cores. It has like almost, what, two and a half times the rate, uh, the AI performance. So there's a lot here. There's a de degradation in the clock speed, which is interesting. Then there's also a massive increase in the memory bandwidth because it's going up to 32 gigs and it's on new GDDR7 VRAM, but all this stuff, yeah, it adds up to being a card that can be pretty crazy. Now, if we compare it to the old benchmarks, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this one right now. We can see the Far Cry 6 one. Nvidia showed that the 5090 was 28% faster in Far Cry 6 with ray tracing on, and then it was 43% faster in Plague Tale Requiem. Now with DLSS being enabled in Plague Tale Requiem, something with you know the massively improved AI performance on the 5090 makes me wonder if it does accelerate DLSS upscaling, the AI upscaling and stuff, could run faster on the new Nvidia graphics card here. I'm not sure exactly how that'll work, that's just a game theory. Maybe that's why it's getting a more significant uplift here. But again, these are different games with different ray tracing implementations and all that kind of stuff. And then when we reveal the new game here, it's Horizon Forbidden West 
and Resident Evil 4 with ray tracing. Now, if you check over to Computer Base, when they did these comparisons here, they combined both Resident Evil 4 and Horizon Forbidden West. And you might be wondering, because if you hop over to the NVIDIA chart, it says that Resident Evil 4 is using ray tracing, but something about Resident Evil 4 is the game itself, yes, it has ray tracing, but turning it on doesn't really make a huge impact on their performance like at all. But here, with the average of those two combined, we are seeing a 33% increase. It's just the raw rasterization gaming performance. Don't get me wrong, ray tracing is valuable as well, and more and more games are using ray tracing, but if we're after high frame rates and actually more performance on the graphics card, we are mostly looking at this rasterized performance. Lines up very, very in line. So CUDA cores handle most of the rasterization performance. Now this is the 5090 and the 5090 is probably gonna have the biggest performance uplift. Nvidia wants people to spend a lot of money on this graphics card and that's the only way they can justify is to make it significantly better. So this is probably the best that we're going to see. Which brings me on to the other cards. Next, we take a look at that 5080, that 80 class graphics card. How is that going to stack up? Now, before, one of the things I really pointed out is that the 5080 doesn't look as crazy as you might want to say it is because Nvidia is going to mostly compare it to the 4080, the original one which costed $1,200. And then that makes a 5080 look good because now it's dropped another 200 bucks to make it $1,000. I know, what a good deal. It's still so much to spend on a graphics card, but at least it's not $1,200. But then what a lot of people aren't taking into account when Nvidia is intentionally trying to not show us is that the 4080 super exists. Maybe this card didn't sell as many overall because it wasn't the first generation card of it there was a super series refresh of these cards that basically just dropped the price it's just two percent faster on the 4080 super but what i want to point out to you is here i'm taking a percentage comparison of the cuda cores and you can see there's only 11 percent more cuda cores like rasterization performance technically on the 5080 and even if you break it down more what I did here, and we'll see it with the FPS as well in the games, I recentered it so that the 4080 Super is the 100% point. And now the 5080 only actually has 6% more CUDA cores compared to that card. And I think that's more aptly the comparison we should be making here. Yeah, the performance before was showing that, hey, over the 4080, with ray tracing on, the 5080 could be 33% faster. It could be 35% faster with DLSS in Plague Tale Requiem. However, when we include the new games, the rasterized games that aren't taking advantage of the new ray tracing cores, this will be the actual performance. We're only seeing like 15% more performance on this generation. And then if, again, if you recenter this to the Super Series graphics card, you can see that the 5080 is only 13% faster. That is not that impressive. If you want a good uplift on performance in a generation, let me just show you something. Here's the RTX 2080. Now this card wasn't that exciting. If we scroll down here, the RTX 3080, so its successor in 2020, and based on tech power-up specs here, we just kind of scroll down to where the 3080 sits, that based on just raw performance, the 3080 was 63% faster than the 2080. And I think that really starts to put in perspective why this here, it only being possibly 13% faster than the last generation part, this isn't that crazy. These numbers that Nvidia is showing you really aren't that crazy. Yeah, the frame gen could be good. It could end up feeling good, but it's definitely not all that it's made out to be. And Nvidia is relying a lot, a lot of a lot on their AI performance. Going from the 4080 Super was at 836 and their 5080 is at 1801. They're relying on that AI performance to sell these cards. We'll definitely see at the end of the day how that ends up playing out. But yeah, let's move over to the other cards to see if they're any better at all. Now there is a 4070 Ti Super as well, but we'll look at that in just a second because Nvidia is specifically comparing the 4070 Ti for a good reason. It's because the 4070 Ti was significantly cut down compared to what the 4070 Ti Super is. It initially could seem pretty good. It's like, yeah, $800 on the 4070 Ti. That wasn't really a great price. And then it's $750 on the 5070 Ti, which is a $50 decrease. And the CUDA cores are going up massively by 17%. The ray tracing also by 17%. The boost clock is actually going 
down, which is kind of disappointing. The bandwidth, the memory bandwidth jumping up to GDR7 and it also having four more gigabytes at 16 versus 12 means a 78% increase in memory bandwidth. That's pretty damn good as well. But when we dig into that performance, yes, before Nvidia was claiming with ray tracing, that is 33% faster in Far Cry 6 and then 41% faster in Plague Tale Requiem, which does seem really, really good. Again, I don't think this was the card that Nvidia should be comparing to because you open this up, you open up the 4070 Ti Super, Again, was $800. The 5070 Ti will be $50 less, granted. Yeah, recentering on the 4070 Ti Super. And you can see the 5070 Ti only has 6% more CUDA cores. It's not that much. So that means, you know, even if the new generation has really efficient cores, this probably isn't going to be more than like 10% faster at best in rasterized games. The boost clock is down on the new generation card, which will probably impact performance, but it does have a pretty big increase in the memory bandwidth at 33% more. But what's interesting about the 4070 Ti Super is this card does also have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. It's just the bandwidth is impacted because of it, you know, being GDR6X versus GDR7. You're probably wondering, how am I getting numbers comparing the 4070 Ti Super versus the 5070 Ti? Because Nvidia never officially showed us this. And these numbers that I am showing you are more of a prediction based off the performance that we saw between the 4070 Ti and 4070 Ti Super. It comes from Computer Base as well because I'm going off of their numbers here. They have reviews of these cards and you can literally just go over here and just hover over it and on average it'll tell you in ray tracing or in rasterization based off of whatever you want to see. It'll tell you about how much performance of these cards get. And here with ray tracing on which should probably be the biggest strength. It's only gonna be 23% faster, and it's only 31% faster than the 4070 Ti Super, the more apt comparison here. And then if we open up the rasterization performance with the new games that we got shown, that's Horizon Forbidden West and then Horizon Evil 4, it's only gonna be 9% faster. And if this isn't proof, like these are Nvidia's own data, you know? If you were to compare it to what the 4070 Ti is, then it's only 20%. And that's like probably not the card they should be comparing it to. So it's 20% faster in that case. But so this new generation is not a massive improvement on the last one. Again, relying so much on that multi-frame generation to absolutely carry this. That's probably why they're reducing the price though, because the performance isn't there. So let's move on to the 4070, 5070, that kind of stuff. Now, based on the specs here, and I went over this in the last video, I think honestly, Nvidia is correct about comparing this card to the original 4070. So I'm going to hide the 4070 Super, and let's just look at the 4070 and 5070. Now, again, 4% more CUDA cores. It's really not that crazy. That's why some of the, the gaming performance is going to blow me away. It's only got a little bit of a faster boost clock and the memory bandwidth, because it's on new GDR7 VRAM, will be 33% faster. Far Cry 6 and Plague Tale Requiem with ray tracing, it was 31% and 41% faster in these titles. It's really blowing me away, and I'm not exactly sure where this performance is coming from, especially when you open up this Horizon Forbidden West. 20% faster here. I don't really know where 20% more performance is coming from. This could be a very cherry picked thing for the new generation 5070 card. I mean, maybe we'll be surprised. Now what's interesting though, is if you do compare it to the 4070 Super, because yes, this card is $50 more, but $50 when you're talking about a $600 graphics card, $550 graphics card, it isn't like a massive gap. And right here is where it just gets so interesting, man, because the 5070, actually has 15% less CUDA cores, which means, yes, the new generation could be more efficient with rasterization, even though I don't think NVIDIA is even focusing on rasterization anymore. Like, let's look at all they've been talking about. They're just talking about ray tracing and AI performance. It also has 15% less ray tracing cores, even though NVIDIA is prioritizing ray tracing for what we can see. Now, the AI performance massively incre increased. The clock speed is a little bit increased and then the memory bandwidth too because of that you know extra gdr7 vram is massively increased and rasterization based off of mostly their own numbers might only be three percent faster than the 4070 super which basically means for 50 dollars less you're just getting a three percent faster graphics card that's crazy has the same amount of vram like they're not upgrading that and here's it on the 4070 scaled 
because the 4070 Super is a lot faster than the 4070. Nvidia is showing us this now and the rasterization just doesn't look that good. And especially with them showing these benchmarks now, I don't even know why they showed this. My theory is that they only showed us ray tracing benchmarks before they showed us these ones. They wanted to show it in its best light first and then now they might be showing us these because they just want to set the expectations in line. I don't really know. I don't know why they did this. Maybe they're just actually internally doing their own testing still behind the scenes that could just also be like a human thing so it, it might not be like a whole business strategy or anything like that yeah it's definitely odd and i also don't know why they removed the other two benchmarks from these like the other non multi frame benchmarks yeah when you really do look at these graphs so like on the base rasterization performance it doesn't look that crazy and that makes a lot of sense why in a lot of these cards they ended up decreasing the price within the generation. Yo, I wanted to pop in after I pretty much recorded everything else and it's actually I'm editing the video right now. Some new leaks have come out about the launch and it's from Moore's Law is Dead. So prepare your eyeballs because this is going to be really hard to look at. <laughs> these are always hard to read. A consistent theme in a lot of these retailers that are receiving cards is that they are in low, low supply. Like some are getting zero 5090s. Some are getting limited 5080s, much less than what they even got with 4080s and the 4080s didn't really sell through that well. But yeah, there's a lot of cases here where it just doesn't really look like they're getting that many graphics cards. And that could mean that the upcoming ones could be at a huge supply shortage, which would make the prices go up. Again, this is leaks, so I'm not 100% sure if this will be true, but I will say that from my own leaker that did leak me some stuff before, and you guys might have remember, I, I made a thing that like this, converting an Australian retailer leak, that this was the price that I came to in, in USD. I actually retracted this price you know, thing that I revealed here when I saw that the 5080 was being revealed at $1,000. But what me and Liliker have talked about, honestly, it's getting more evidence this might be the case, that this is going to be the price, possibly, when the cards are in shortage. That NVIDIA is selling things to retailers at a higher price because there isn't enough supply available. NVIDIA is maybe doing this intentionally, maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. Remember about MSRPs is NVIDIA can say that it costs as much, but when you get into reality, and want to buy the graphics card, then it might not always be sold for that. Just want to keep that in mind and let's roll around the rest of the video. They have confirmed that the embargoes for the RTX 5090 and 5080 will be on the 23rd for the 5090 and then the 5080 will be on the 29th. So we'll be able to officially see like review benchmarks and stuff. I am getting a sample. I'll be trying that out too. Now what's funny though is I'm going to be getting a 5090 but uh, I don't have a 4090. You know, I ain't buying that shit. Yeah, I don't know what to compare the new card against. Um, now, if you do want to dig into these numbers a little bit more on your own, I had people on the last video request to have the spreadsheet be public so they can just kind of look at the calculations that are done, all the specs and everything. And this will be available to you in the description. But there was one person that was annoying as f and they jumped into my Discord server and they said, hey, I need this. I need this. You need to send me this right now. And I was like, bro, who the f are you? And then he was also fighting with people in the server, just being an absolute asshole. So don't do that shit. The only reason I wasn't sharing this with you guys before is because I didn't know if it leaked anything personal. And that's why I make the video. And now you guys can just reference this if you want. Yeah, don't be like that guy. He got banned. Okay? F that guy. But here is this if you want to check it out. But I think this explains a lot of how these cards are being priced and why they started to look good. And then all of a sudden you dig deeper into it and it really doesn't look all that exciting. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm going to be probably reading them as much as I can, though I'm going to be very busy. Very busy. So we'll see how much time I get. All right. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a good one. And peace. Peace.